It's been a few days now since our all-time favorite Nintendo 64 shooter GoldenEye has made its long-rumored jump to modern consoles, the Switch and the Xbox. But it is an emulation, it is not a port and it is not a remake. That's why a lot of people seem to have problems with it. It's buggy, it has slowdowns, it has lagging. And I wanted to go into detail about these issues and also about the remakes that were cancelled or never released. And for this discussion, I invited two very special guests. First and foremost, BAFTA award-winning lead artist, senior artist and special effects artist Adrian Smith, who was part of the original team at Rare Limited that developed GoldenEye. And secondly, I have the very special honor to welcome Grass Lou, a YouTuber with 10 years experience and tons of subscribers and I was told that he does not appear often on camera so this will definitely be a treat. I'm Benjamin Lind, this is the Bond Bulletin and the GoldenEye re-release discussion. Have fun! Adrian, let's start with you. Can you talk us a bit through your involvement in the making of the original GoldenEye game and how it was to work on the greatest video game of all time. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Um, I was pretty much uh, a senior computer graphic artist working on uh, Diddy Kong's Quest, uh, which is the second of the franchise of uh, the Donkey Kong series. And I was coming pretty much to the end of that game and then I was transferred onto the GoldenEye team. And um, I was probably um, the last member of the team uh, on the art side to come over. Um, so I was a senior uh, computer graphic artist on that game and I was primarily brought on to uh, as an environment artist um, but I started on making the, the weapons uh, initially uh, for, for the game um, because um, uh, Carl was already working on the actual backgrounds. I was then given two of the backgrounds to actually work on uh, which was the Arecibo dish while I was working on the weapons uh, and the jungle. Because of my experience of working on Donkey Kong and the making of jungles and, and that, so nobody wanted to do the jungle, so I ended up uh, being uh, handed over to the, doing the jungle. So I thought, oh no, not another jungle. Uh, but in between time, um, having uh, done uh, a bit of extra additional graphics for Killer Instinct. I was really cutting my teeth on doing the visual effects work. So I did uh, a lot of the visual effects on Killer Instinct. So that then later translated over uh, onto working with Mark, uh, working on the uh, effects for the, we uh, for the weapons, uh, doing the, uh, the Walter PPK and all the various or various other weapons and doing all the muzzle flashes and all the trace of fire along with the explosions uh, that, I'd, that I'd worked on um, for the game. And I pretty much had the Arecibo dish pretty much done and dusted and I just had to wait and wait and wait for it to actually get to a point where it was actually put into the game. Um, but I was doing all sorts of things with the watches and doing the front end graphics uh, for that as well so everybody it was really good because uh, it was a really flat structure uh, rare at the time there was a there was a top-down structure from programmers to designers to artists then uh, music musicians and, and uh, testers and so on and so on so uh, it was quite unusual for the golden eye team because it was all Everybody knew what their roles were and everybody just got on with their jobs. Um, so it was pretty much Martin in charge of it and everybody else just fit, fitted into their role. So it was a really unique uh, structure in, in Rare because it didn't follow that structure normally that, it, that was the case on other game titles. So that's what really made that development really, really work. So I had previously done uh, games for Donkey Kong Country and Diddy Kong's Quest, so I had had previous games experience and having worked on Killer Instinct. So um, yeah, I was one of the most more experienced graphic artists on the on the team. So having done both front end and level design, as well as doing the visual effects and the uh, uh, the weapons as well. So yeah. 
Are you still playing it? No. No, I'm <laughs> teaching it. I'm teaching it at Falmouth University. Um, yeah. I've been at Falmouth University for three and a half years. I'm just about... They've pulled me back in, Benjamin. They've, there's another company that's got a, uh, a VR company that, that's made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. So um, I start tomorrow. <laughs> oh, a, how nice. As, a, as an art lead uh, for a VR company. Uh, helping good. develop their VR titles. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what games they're working on. I don't, I don't think there'll be a, <laughs> a VR version of Bond, but we'll just have to <laughs> wait and see. But it, uh, <laughs> would there be a market for it? Probably. Probably. Yeah. 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 Probably. Yeah. Definitely. Have you played any other James Bond video games that came after it, like Tomorrow Never Dies, The World Is Not Enough, also for Nintendo 64? No. No, I didn't. Nope. No, I, I was pretty much busy working as an art lead uh, on other uh, titles for other studios. I, I was pretty much wrapped up with core design after I left mm. um, Rare, working uh, on Fighting Force 2 and on Tomb Raider. So um, I was at core for 10 years, but was a senior computer graphic artist. Um, yeah. And that was quite a long time. So uh, we made other games like Race Nation and stuff like that, but I was primarily another senior senior artist working on those titles. Mm. And my last um, game for them was working um, uh, on Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness, so that's another benchmark title that, that that's uh, 20th anniversary this year, and, and that's got a cult following as well from the fans that mm. actually uh, have made a high-res version of that game. And that's sort of... Um, got a real real momentum behind it and they've made a really good job of that so it's a bit of a bit of a shame that the 20, 25th anniversary of the uh goldeneye game was was don't get me wrong i think it's nice that it's uh, it's kept that longevity and it's it's kept it's the gameplay that makes the the, the gaming yeah. um the gameplay is key um but i think the fans have been short short changed in the fact that you've got new interesting hardware with the Switch and with the Xbox uh, that they they could have made a, at least a, a, a platform specific uh, game that enhanced those te uh, technologies and the software behind them so yeah, yeah instead of just being a straight port yeah yeah of course somebody who is an expert in gaming and on various consoles and the Bond games is my second guest for today, which who is Grass Lou, a YouTuber with 10 years of experience with over 44,000 subscribers. He's played all the Bond games across all <laughs> platforms, delivers playthroughs and shows you how to get the best achievements. Grass Lou, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is your first public interview, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It it's not my first time showing my face because oh, last damn. year when I went last year when <laughs> I went for the Golden Eye Championships, I was I mean I had to be there, cameras everywhere. So it's not it's not my first time, but it's gonna be the first time for a lot of people seeing me. So you can okay. see so. <laughs> but your your definitely your favorite game seems to be Golden Eye. Yeah, I mean, you could say it is, I think. It's definitely one of the games. So, what makes it so special for you? I don't know. Everything, I guess. I mean, I've been playing it my whole life. The game is actually one year older than I am. But uh, I've been playing it since I have years of memory. My dad used to give me his second controller while he will play single player. So I guess that's where I kind of caught the game on how to play and all that, then when I had the chance, I will play myself with the cheats and everything. Uh, and then I guess I started playing it with my brother too, with Perfect Dark, and we switched. And my brother liked Perfect Dark. I liked GoldenEye more. Uh, <laughs> Controversial. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I like both games equally, I will say. They are both different, of course. But I will always go back to GoldenEye and play single player. It has something that really got me stuck with it all the time. And I will usually play it at least once a year. Even when we got the Xbox 360 or the Wii or whatever, we still got the N64 there just to play GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. So it, it never really left me, I will say. 
Mm. And uh, we now scratched the surface of the re-release, obviously, and on Twitter, where you also are very present, you are quite open and honest when it comes to the re-release and its various uh, bugs and problems that it has. What yeah. is it? What's, what's wrong with it? What's right with it? I think it's easier <laughs> to say. Um, I don't know. I'm, as you said, I'm very disappointed with the release. I was very open with this since day one. It was actually the first time I used my voice on YouTube to mm. actually voice my concerns about the game. Uh, I planned this for a few days, I mean for a few weeks, because I knew something was off. I have some in info. Like I have some information from insiders that told me things about the game, and I already knew from a few months back that it was going to be a huge disappointment. But I still wanted to have a keep an open mind. Then I booted the game right on the stream, and if you check the live replay, you will see me saying, the music is broken. The first three seconds of the stream, you hear me, you can read me say that. Um, that's as you said, just scratching the surface of it. But the first thing you notice is the music is broken, and I think that's a big problem, considering the, you know, everyone knows and loves the music of GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. They did an amazing job. And then you come here 20, almost 26 years later, and they somehow present you with a version that has worse quality on the music than the N64. It's quite impressive, to be honest. Mm. And uh, a lot of noticeable bugs from what I've seen. My favorite is the soldier going down through the concrete and coming back up and then the invisible yeah. stairs. I think that was uh, so far my favorite. Um, how does the game hold up in terms of uh, frame rates and lagging and everything? So the original, of course, we all know, runs at like 10 FPS, 15 FPS on some levels. But while it of course, it's not, I mean, it's playable, but for today's standards, kids nowadays and all that, are, they are going to have a bad time with that. Uh, but it was smooth, you know, the frame time and all that, it was a smooth experience. You will control it with a joystick, fine, and all that. But on the new release on Xbox, not on the Switch, on Switch it's actually fine, but on the Xbox version, which is supposedly the most power, powerful one, you know, you have 4K, you have 30 FPS, you have... It's the most powerful console in the market right now. Yeah. It has a slowdown issues. Like, mm -hmm. you are controlling your character and you notice how suddenly your sensitivity is lower. And it's not that it's slower, it's just the game is running at a slower pace than it's supposed to. This didn't happen on the N64 because there's frame skipping. I mean, there's both. There's the slowdowns and frame skipping. But yeah, on the on the Xbox, it's it's actually hitting 30 FPS all the time. But for some reason, it slows down sometimes. And it's mm -hmm. not because of there's a lot of guards or explosions or something. It's just randomly. I actually tested the game on Frigate, where you can just look at the water. There's absolutely nothing. Um, even there, there's the slowdowns randomly. I counted like five every minute four or five, and that's actually pretty bad for the gameplay experience, I think. And that's one of the issues that keeps getting me now, because I'm recording videos for it, and every time I get back to it, because I'm used to all the other versions, of, of course, I'm used to the N64, to the emulators, to everything else, and every time I get back to the Xbox version, it feels really bad to play. <laughs> okay. So really actually, thing. so actually, the N64 with the cartridge is still the way to go. If you seriously want to enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, if you want to enjoy the original experience, definitely. There's of course ways to play on PC now, where you can play at 60 FPS with higher resolutions, higher resolution text, and everything. But I mm. think, to me at least, the original version is still perfectly. Mm. It works just fine. <laughs> okay. And you also did videos on this 2007 Xbox Live Arcade remake of GoldenEye, which was an actual remake. 
Yeah. Uh, never officially released, but leaked over two years ago, just over two years ago. It was exactly February uh, 2021, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would that have been the better release? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, Adrian, you're, you're nodding. <laughs> to your knowledge, was anybody of the original team involved in that remake? Uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't know. Mark. But, uh, I would. Uh, mm -hmm. I Mark that they was used, involved. Uh, they they yeah. used my effects work in, that, that was still in there. So the original graphics yeah. from the effects were were still there. So I was quite pleased about that. Yeah. Did you play it or did you just see it? No, I did play it. I managed to get the download for uh, nice. myself, and uh, I've got it on my PC as well. So I did play it. Seems we all did. <laughs> 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 I played it as well. I had a, a huge fun with it. Uh, must say, really, uh, we were very quick then to get it. Um, I think my my personal opinion. I think it would have been the better release if they would have worked on it a bit more, um, and given it the proper exposure. It would have fitted our time. Um, the, 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 when you look at the people who play games today, uh, the demographics and what they demand from games, I think it would have been the better release. Um, why this was not for, thought through or followed through, I don't know. Graslu, do you have any information on that? Why it was never officially released? Why it was scrapped, basically? That would have been for legal reasons, I would imagine. So. Legal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Nintendo, MGM, mm -hmm. you know... Yep. All the bond licenses. Mm. There's yeah. rumors speaking, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of legal reasons, you know what I'm coming to next. <laughs> Golden Eye 25. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, to give you a bit of background, um, and Adrian, you you said it. You teach uh, the new, the next generation of game developers to make That's games, right. and yeah. uh, there were two very promising developers um, that had their Unreal Engine GoldenEye remake entitled GoldenEye 25 torpedoed yeah. by MGM with a cease and desist order. And despite that, would you say? such passion projects are better in the hands of fans or big companies? Um, from my experience with the Tomb Raider franchise, uh, which is evident in the release with uh, Tomb Raider Angel of Darkness, uh, you have that level, uh, again, it's a flat level playing field that we had on the dev team. And because the fans are so loyal, and uh, after that, pushing that boundary of the technology and the software behind it, you would have got, I think, uh, not necessarily the same game, but you would have got an improved game. Um, as is with anything, it has to be tested, and it all comes down to test, 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 and test. Uh, but we'll never know, because they'll, they have that cease and desist. Uh, but it had the potential to be there. You could see the, the way that the quality had gone into the front end, um, the animations of the of the gun gun mechanics and uh, uh, as well as the the levels themselves, and it was running at a really good frame rate. Now we don't know what the actual level design was going to be going to look like, um, but you 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 got a taster of, of that uh, with uh, Golden Eye Twenty Five, and it's a real shame because that that's the fans getting behind uh, the actual game. Um, and unfortunately, that's the nature of the business that we're in because of the IPs involved and the way that it is shared between three three major uh, uh, partners. Um, mm. That that's the real real shame of shame of it, I think. Um, and but I think the passion is still there. It just has to overcome that hurdle, uh, that legal hur hurdle. Excuse me uh, mm. of. Um, not not re, uh, not being able to uh, realize that IP on the next mm. generation of consoles, so that the fans can enjoy it in its entirety uh, yeah. uh, with the with with the te technology being pushed forward. Mm. Do you, as a as an expert in the industry, do you see a way that somewhere down the road in the future, fans and big companies can work together to make these games really great? 
Um, I think, uh, I mean, it was unusual because when we were developing uh, GoldenEye, a lot of film conversions never really translated onto into games. They were very much um, uh, using a standard template and it was just uh, using the graphical elements from the film to actually generate those actual games. And GoldenEye broke that mold. Um, so it, it, it made, it, made it, it, it be quite unique. And then obviously subsequent developers have followed that, that format because of the FPS uh, formula that we use. Um, I still think you can again capture that. It just depends on the, on the next IP that the films come out and then have not have that um, link with the platform that is being developed on with the actual software developer as well as the film people behind it. It needs to break that legal connection and sort of keep it its IP, IP in a company of its own right so that it, then it doesn't have all those legal uh, conflicts that go on between different developers, publishers, as well as uh, hardware manufacturers. Mm. Now, Graslu, I, I think you were also involved uh, with GoldenEye Source, yeah. I think. Yeah, um, well I'm still. This is a. I still am. You're still involved. This yeah. is this is a project that has never had, uh, to far to my knowledge, any legal trouble, no. but is still um, borrowing heavily from GoldenEye. Why did that go through? I don't know. I some time ago I learned to try to not make any sense of what MGM does. Because mm -hmm. it just makes no sense. Some people said, well, GoldenEye 25 was going to interfere with the GoldenEye anniversary for their release. Mm -hmm. So that's why they shut, shut it down. But then you think about GoldenEye Source. Um, we actually had a release. Well, it was before my time on the team. But in 2010, mm -hmm. GoldenEye Source had a release alongside the GoldenEye Wii remake at the same time, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And you could say that's that's going to affect the sales for the Wii version because you actually have a free way to play it on PC. That's actually a faithful remaster, yeah. well, remake of yeah. the original. But they didn't do anything, uh, mm -hmm. and they know, they definitely know it exists. Uh, yeah. But I don't know why they never. I mean, I'm glad they never did anything, but I, I it escapes me why they mm. they decided to go after GoldenEye 25, but not. Goldeneye Source, especially mm. considering that they also worked on, they both worked on Goldeneye Source before starting Goldeneye 25. Yeah, yeah. But, well, not all hope is lost. Uh, there is a new game in development, different title, different graphics, uh, some well-known faces from what I've seen from Goldeneye at least, uh, where, where they don't get into any troubles with. Uh, so, I'm still happy to see what these guys will develop in the future. Um, my last question to you both is is the odd one out. It has nothing to do with GoldenEye. But um, if you could make any Bond film into a game right now, if we would give you all the money, which one would you do? What is playable? That's a lot of films to choose from. <laughs> yeah. I guess the ones that will fit gameplay most are the latest Craig ones because they have mm. the most action, in my opinion. Something like Casino Royale. Although we already had that in Quantum of Solace, I guess, in the mm. video game because yeah. Quantum of Solace was actually made during the recording, the filming of the of the movie. So yeah. they didn't have the full script even. So they had to do flashbacks to Casino Royale most of the game. So I guess we already have that. Uh, I will know, actually. But I guess I something... One, from... I think the last one, then, Daniel Craig, in yeah. it, is probably no time to die. Most, most, most potential because mm -hmm. of the locations and the, and the areas uh, that, that opens itself up to the same level of, uh, of gameplay uh, that we had mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in GoldenEye. Um, and that's key. It's key in, in, in having those facilities and those different locations. So it captures the 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 way the player can then go through those different types of missions 
So the yep. more more of those those types of games in those locations, I would say the last one probably had the best opportunity with that. So I agree with Grassley with with the Daniel Craig films. Yeah. Would that be the first game where the main character dies in the end? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the great thing. That's a great thing with games. You can uh, yeah. you, you don't you don't have to follow the narrative for what happens in the actual film. So you can that's just try to get play Daniel Craig for as long as you like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today for this informative talk about uh, the original GoldenEye, of course, and the re-release. If you're interested in playing it, uh, you can find everything down in the description. And uh, maybe we're back someday. Maybe we can play over the internet. Who knows? And play mm -hmm. a match. Us three. Wouldn't that be fun? I still have the Nintendo 64. Grasslu, do you have one? Of course you have one. I have five. I You're think. five. I think so, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I bought mine just for Goldeneye. I had no idea what it was, but it had James Bond on it. So <laughs> I, I always thought uh, where there's James, James Bond on it, there's James Bond in it. So I bought it. And yeah. uh, then I realized I need a console for that. And then I saw the price for it. And well, then I started saving my money. Yeah. But it was all worth it. It's still here and it still works. And I only have two games with Goldeneye and the world is not enough. These are all the games like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Still got and yeah, uh, my dear friend Yannick and me, uh, who does the music for many of my videos, uh, when he was here, when he visited me, he uh, played with me, and we realized we are now old men, and we can't <laughs> play with the controllers anymore. It's uh -huh. it was much easier when you were younger. I don't know why that happened, but we we were really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's it's uh, definitely a trip down memory lane to oh, good. very happy childhood. Adrian, yeah. uh, you were responsible for that, so thank you very much. And no, of no course, the no, the, of the rare team who made it all happen. Thank you very much, guys. Hope to see you sometime in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for interviewing me. Thanks so thank much. You. Nice to meet you again, Grizzly. Nice meeting you too. <laughs> you have to get my game signed. <laughs> well. Well, I will do, yeah. <laughs>